We are getting set for the new season of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. We're now into Season 7. It's hard to believe that we're now that long into the, the era of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. I'm GTH Jeremy Hastings. A little bit about me, for those of you that might be new to the channel. I'm apparently the Lamar Jackson of Patreons, as Mark Ellis said at Spectacular 4. And boy, has that statement aged like milk over the last couple months. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I'm also apparently already the front runner for the Yodi Award next year, according to my fellow reactors. I have no idea what they're talking about. They're absolutely crazy. Let's also see. Very bad at trivia. A lot of dumb catchphrases. I think I'm funny, but really I'm not. Yeah, that's about it. So, welcome. If you're going to stick around, thank you for joining in to this edition and this season of JTH Reacts to the Move Trivia Schmodown. We're kicking off Season 7 with... Uh, yet another Brooklyn Live event. Last year, for Season 6, they took place at the Roulette Auditorium. Well, same time, different season. Now we're back at the Roulette Auditorium in Brooklyn, New York, to kick off yet another year of the Schmodown. One of the faces in this particular season premiere was there last year in Dangerous Dan Merle, who will be competing in a triple threat match to determine the number one contender for Ben the Boss Bateman's movie trivia Schmodown Singles Championship of the World. Uh, accompanying him will also be the two competitors of Shazam, who Dan Merle faced at the Spectacular Four, mainly Brendan the Kid Meyer and William the Beast Bibiani. The undercard for this match is kind of a, a brewing, kind of family, burning druids, jum, jumbulation, jambalaya thing between Andrew Guy and Robert Meyer Burnett, who is the captain and the leader of the burning druids faction. There's a lot of talk and smack that's been going on with that particular feud, but long story short, these feuds are all culminating into the new season of Season 7 of the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and JTH hopefully will be here to react to all of them this season. So without further ado, let's get into the new season of JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. they got to be right where we are today in a little video right here. Nice thing about these uh, the promos is um, finally able to for the uh, actual live stream is I'm actually glad to see actual showdown players in so, you know the, the chat. You beat me. Well, Which will you're not, not going to see the chat, obviously, because it's going to be the actual video. I don't care. You can um, have three people on one. You can have me play Merle again. You can have me do whatever you want. You yeah, because that's uh, something I wasn't able to be able to enjoy because of my uh, stinky, stinky internet connection at this time one year ago. Um, it allowed me to not be able to actually watch the live events live until uh, the Chicago event. Oh, oh, hit him with a pillow. <laughs> For Christian, and he lets this had this happen to me. Is he ready mentally? Is he ready physically? So Robert Marvin, yeah. a very happy to yeah. greet his stable crew still limping. These are the number one contenders in this league. They're going all the way. Yeah, all about that. Want some popcorn? It's My Fishers from Ocean City. The way Got the some this afternoon because I knew I'd be. Uh, I knew I'd be hungry by the time this thing started. I think that's probably uh, a good a good time to announce my retirement. <clears throat> but I think what's really important is what happens with me next year is going to be. The thing that sucked about this is I was in LA for the spectacular when this aired, and unfortunately. I was just wasn't able to get it recorded because the lighting in my room wasn't all that good. It's time for a change. I'm captain now. 
Now I'm with Sam and Drew McQueenie. Are you kidding me? This is gonna be absolutely out of this world. Do your worst. Make it about you again. Because you know what? I'm the I'm captain, captain now, now, bitch. Oh, sorry. I guess I'll have to boop that out. No, not gonna do that. what the over under for this Ladies match will on. be I mean, look, no, five no loss there between those six two for sure and there's so much there's so much animosity you could feel it backstage you could feel it, it, it just for people walking in it is there's so much going down with this match yeah it's... robert meyer burnett yeah uh, got my whiteboard did not on drink standby that's true not that i'll need it true. not gonna get any questions before, right i'm sure again. I don't know. Andrew Guy might be the only person who goes on vacation and takes an office chair with him. It's very confusing. That's yeah, the truth. Well, you know, the other thing uh, that they saw in the beginning that Sam Levine drafted Andrew Guy. Now, Sam Levine and Andrew Guy had a conversation before this. This match was set up way before the draft and everything, too. They had a mutual uh, understanding. Guy told Levine, I'm good. I want to do this on my own. I want to go in there and face him on his own. And Burnett, we thought, was going to do that. But Burnett is actually entering with someone tonight. And we'll... we'll show really? you guys who that is when, when do we know who they are uh, I, know they? I know who it is but i'm waiting for the crowd to see and we'll explain a little bit more once that person walks in but, oh it's like oh, a reveal shoot. i believe so wow. uh, you, you put glasses on this guy and he knows the thing i know or two. i know I'm trying, I think they look nice. I'm trying to remember so everybody that got drafted nice. i'll see, we'll but talk about it at home. the question though is that we uh -huh. know that andrew guy in the past has been an emotional player we know that when he has oh, james had white got drafted with him that was he uh shows up he beat that raised an eyebrow or two and then when the stakes got on might be james i know you know, really james was there Roca, at the brooklyn show it, last year because i remember i was in was in talks with him hurts to potentially um get up to the brooklyn guy. show last year but things fell through i wasn't able to do it so i he's been there before it, so it wouldn't Roca, surprise me if it's him against uh, i'd actually uh, almost Bateman. hope that it was him it was the motion was high so what is he going to do here against his former manager well, to find Less it. emotion, right. more gamesmanship, more stepping up in the big moment. Basically, you think Andrew Guy needs to turn into a legend named Eli Manning tonight. Oh, that, was for you. Oh. that was for some I like of you. Doing there. I personally hate the ball club. Who? That was for you, New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, never heard of him. Yeah, so Not very good. We're see because this is... Guy has everything to lose. Burnett has nothing to lose. Burnett took the 10th spot in his faction tonight, because so he was in order to play. But he, that was last match against Dagnino was a disaster. It was. It was. Uh, to, to say to say it was awful is an insult to everything else I've ever called awful. <laughs> That's true. It was bad. Robert what else Burnett, have you called awful? Here for free pizza, Probably you know my he team. He's a showman. He likes performing, and he likes doing a little bit of competing as well. Well, are you ready, my friend? I'm prepared, ready to go. The beard is good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, mm. it is time this beard's good for too. the movie, movie trivia. trivia. Slow down. I couldn't, I couldn't hold my note because my, my mic would distort the, the noise. That's what happens when you have a laptop circa 2009. First. Or is it 2011? Either way, it's old. Old, 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 old. As old as my beard. Representing the Burning Drews. You know, like I'm uh, listening to, to Nintendo 64 music. By the Golden Boy, James White. Oh, it is James. He Yay. Is I, I'm glad they acknowledged that. Oh, there, there's a, uh, there's Doug. I recognize Doug. Hey, Doug. Yeah, James White in his O stink cap. Oh. Why, why do all the Schmodown people have to be O's fans? Ellis. Um, Thad. James. Me. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not Schmodown. You're, you're wrong, Billy Bedford. Let me explain something to you all now. <laughs> Where is that, Billy Bedford? I'm trying to remember. You know, it might not be. After Guy's performance in the family this year, it's in-action oh, army. Oh, man. Mm. That's not going to get the fans happy, I'll tell you that. 
no action. This guy is a choker, not a clutch player. My genius led to the nuke that brought you all of here and us together. Andrew Guy, I gave him every match. I promised Drew McWeeny a championship, and you know why he didn't get it? Andrew Guy choked, choked, choked. As a matter of fact, he choked like me on popcorn. <laughs> my genius even led to the deal they announced with Skybound. You know who got that in? <laughs> me. Me. I met with the executives. Me. They knew, they knew my genius was not limited to this jacket. Christian's like, yeah, and really true. I drafted the golden boy, the greatest rookie this game has ever seen. Or we'll see. You'll see when he plays. But before that... <laughs> well, I've seen him play. He's pretty darn good. you all follow him. I don't know what you think, Mr. Action. When has he ever won without being carried by somebody else? When? You know what? The proof will be in the pudding, gentlemen. And I will just... What kind of pudding? ...my action to speak louder than his in action. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Robert Meyer Burnett going after his old... His, his James Stone, everyone, stand up! Damn it, I said stand up! James White was chosen in the second round. No one who knew who James White was, and now they know who he is, and he's there for the I second. did! That's right, that's, uh, that's a strong words from Robert Meyer Burnett, and I guess thank you for the Skybound deal? Yeah. I didn't, exactly. I didn't know. Is that news to you? He must have been in the room when I wasn't there. And well, I was in there too. Opponent. Just nobody saw me. Just like nobody's gonna see this. Ah! First joke of the year on JTH, made by me. Get used to that. You'll hear that a lot throughout the year. Bad playing. Me insulting myself. A lot of this. Yeah! Oh, he's he's wearing a doll face shirt. That's that's nice. It's a nice touch. Oh, is that Nico? I think that's Nico. Nico, are you wearing a tie dye shirt? I'll never think of you the same again. Why do they love Andrew Guy? Because we're dicks and pricks and everything else. Fair enough. We've had our beef in the past, I guess. Is that real? Welcome uh -oh. to the main event, my friends. Um, I don't think though. All right. Maybe twenty. Twenty. I am so. Excited to show you the new Drew, the usual suspects, and an embarrassment of a dinosaur, of a fossil. This man was the IG champion before Brendan Meyer was even born. All right? He is a joke. Almost right. When I was at my lowest, my real lowest, I quit. I walked away. I walked away from you, and I apologize. But you know what happened? He made it about him. Unscripted, unabashed. That was real. He does not care about me. He does not care about you. Not true. That's mm. not true. Mm. I won a belt once. You have not. Hey. You won a belt once. That's cute. That's real cute. Why are you talking? I didn't talk during yours. Have some respect for the game. What respect? This buffoon didn't even look at the wheel before he got on stage. He doesn't study. He doesn't care. He only cares about himself. And you know what? I'm going to embarrass him right now for you, for them, and for Skybound, baby. Let's go. Uh, well, so we're on the, the fourth Skybound uh, plug. Boy, they're really letting you know about the, the, the Skybound deal. We are heated exactly what we thought. The crowd is hyped. 
Mark, and uh, it, it, just for the record, I'm not Give me the it. power! No, no, no nope. not at all. We'll, we'll uh, Krishna agrees. Yes. No. All right, ladies no. and gentlemen. Check your no. DM box, Skybound. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> so, oh. we got Andrew Guy on the table. We got Checks Renette in the mail. The table. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the been a long time we'll since I did this, but check to see if it works. It. Hey, it works. Now, will hear eight questions. Uh, will we get any right answers? Um, no. Works perfectly. Microphone. You also each have three usages of the JTE Very nice. The duration of Not the JTE rule. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. You want us to repeat it. You just want to buy yourself another 15 seconds for dramatic purposes. Use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any and, point uh, throughout the three-round match. match. All right, so we then, we start yeah. with Andrew Guy. Nobody ever Very cheers nice. the rules, you know? No. Nobody ever... Nobody ever cheers for it. Yeah, it's kind of a cheap... Because no one likes the rules. Yeah. All right, we start with Andrew Guy. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Robert Meyer Burnett, are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to Schmoda! Yay! Round number one, question oh, number there's one. Oh, there's no ding, ding, ding. In the realm of well, that's right. Adventure. I did it for you. Who was the headlining star in the 90s action films The Specialist and Assassins? May we do ask the crowd to please remain silent during the yes. uh, answering portion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, stranger, who I may be related to someday in the future. Are you are you asking for just one name? Yes. Just one name. Okay. Five, four. I'm gonna start out three, one for one. It's two, a mirror. One. We start with Andrew. It's Dine. Sly Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Yes, Robert Meyer Burnett. Yay! Sly Stallone. Yes. Okay. Tie it up. One, one, I'm one for one. Don't actors, get used to that, folks. And your question: Which actor has played such characters as Lieutenant Daniel Caffey? Ethan Hunt and Frank T.J. Mackey. Oh. So Ethan I Hunt am, uh, is the um, so the Mission oh, Impossible. Keep score, so. Good for you. Yeah, got this one right. You come out of retirement. I'm gonna be two for two. Oh. Hot day. <laughs> Called police and the fireman. Three, two. It's Tom one. Cruise. Robert Meyer Burnett. Oh. Tom Cruise. Yes, sir. Yay. T.C. Legend, baby. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. It is. All right. Question three. TC Legend. Question three. Uh, answer was Tom right. Cruise. You Let's lose. Go. Who played Chucky Sullivan, Will's best friend, and Goodwill Hunting? From the Chucky of Sullivan. Dramas. Isn't it? Dramas. Dramas. It's a As opposed dramas. to the category of 90s films. In the category of 90s films. You're still welcome, Christian. I, I didn't get no check about that, though. He follows one of my followers on Twitter. So. Five, four, three, two. Ben Affleck? One, Andrew. Ben Affleck. Yes. And Robert Meyer Burnett. Ben Affleck. Yes. Yay! Three. I am three for three. Holy chalupa. Questions in the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question, what Disney animated film is known for the song lyric, A Tale As Old As Time? Wow. It's, round, it's the first season in round one. Wow. Get lost. I think the crowd's just upset because they really want to sing yeah. and they have to wait Five, another 10 seconds. Four, three, two. Uh, Beauty one. and the Beast. And we start with Andrew Guy. Beauty oh, sorry, and the Beast. Sorry. Yeah, good. That's right. That's right. And it's fine. Yes, right. Robert. Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Okay. I am four for four. Right. What, what in Equestria is going on here? All right, here we go. Next question. No. No. Five. This is the fifth question. Fantasy sci fi. Who played John Connor? In Terminator Salvation. Ooh, I'm going to be five for five. Boy, man. What? Man. Of impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stop it. <laughs> five. <laughs> four. Five. Three. It's an aggressive count you got there. One. Robert. Christian Bale. What do, you, what do you got? Christian Bale. Yes. And Guy. <clears throat> Christian Bale. Tie game. How am I five for five? I'm not that smart. Your next category is in the world of comedies. Ah, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a new era, but we still get laughs. It, but it, it's the same it's old story, same, the same old song and laugh. Ah. The film Elf. Oh dear. You see how my questions are really tight and easy to, you know, 
Simple. I get to the point. I'm very proud of you. You know, you and your impressions and your robot. Yeah. <laughs> Five. Swong. Swong. Four. Swong. Swong. Three. Repeat the question. That was from Andrew. Okay. Who directed Elf? All right, I'm good. Did you just throw a cap at me? I did. <laughs> <laughs> the dastard isn't completely gone yet. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be my first wrong five, answer. Four, Darn it! Three. That five in a row though. That's a that's a record. Start with uh, with Andrew Guy in this one. John Favreau. Yes. Oh. And John oh. Favreau. Yes. There we go. Very Tie nice. Still. High game after was after. Wake up! Let's go! It's a perfect game right now. Come on! Woo! All right. There we go. Why do you say that once I got spirit in my mouth? Horror slash thriller. God. Who starred as lawyer and adulterer Dan Gallagher in the film Fatal Attraction? I love the way that. Cannot say I've heard of this movie. This <laughs> I am a lawyer and an adulterer. And an adulterer. I do adultering on the side. Don't leave the door open. <laughs> Five. Makes sense if you think Too about far. it. Three. Too far. Too far. Sorry. Two. Family program. Babes, will you shut your ass? Five. Four. Three. Two, one, pen. Uh, no swearing, Christian. You're right. <laughs> well done. Mm, you lose JTE. Pens down. Pens down. And you really are baby face now, huh? And Robert Meyer Burnett. Michael Douglas. Yes. And Andrew. Oh. oh yeah, baby, Michael Douglas. <laughs> he got it. Michael got Douglas, it. the American seven, president. Seven, seven. Look at that. So. Strangely enough, we are in a position where both yes. competitors are almost going to get a perfect round. Almost. Perfect you seem confident that it's not going to happen. So if they get this correct, they have a perfect round and they have a chance for a bonus question, Mark. It absolutely. is a Patreon question. Thank you to all of our patrons. Is it mine? Please let it be uh, mine. This comes to us courtesy of Jeremy Hastings. How about Yay! That? Jeremy. Jeremy Hastings. And he wanted a question in the category of 80s movies. Oh, it's the Who Framed Roger Rabbit question. I lived through that decade. Just being <laughs> Thank you very much. And your question. What two classic cartoon characters famously take part in a dueling piano duet in 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Ooh. I like that query a It's a great lot. question. It's a good question. I like it. Make them work for and it. And now I'm getting tagged. Make them work for Yay! it. Yay! Who would have thunk it? <clears throat> So we're going to find out in a second here. And no, uh, Donald five, did not call Daffy the N-word. I know people three, are going to think that. Two, one, pens down. We start with Andrew Guy. Tom and Jerry. Oh. And Robert Meyer Burnett. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Oh. The answer was so Daffy close. Duck and Donald Duck. So both got it incorrect. Two ducks. Seven, seven, we stay. No perfect round. But now we enter round number two, and it's all tied up. 7-7, seven, seven, the this captain and dastardly two guy. Oh, uh, pretty Shannon Barney uh, complimented my question, and um, uh, uh, Rachel and uh, Tim are in the chat and are kind of crapping on the easiness of the questions. Um, which, yeah, I can understand that from a player standpoint. I can understand oh, Rachel and Tim's um, <laughs> assessment of the easiness of the questions. At the same time, though, I'll speak on behalf of a fan, from a fan's point of view, that has actually attended live events in the past. Someone like me, who, would, who spends seven, eight hundred dollars to go there, I want to see people get answers right. So, so we have Drew and I don't Mark care if you ask who directed Jordan Peele's Us. As long as people get the and questions right, Andrew Guy I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine or with. Or you may defer to your opponent. You should defer to me. I like playing from behind. <laughs> that means move, Colonel. <laughs> I believe he deferred his spin to you, Robert. Oh, why didn't you say that? From... Robert Mybernak, big spin there. There it is. All right. So again, again, unless it lands on opponent's choice. Yeah. 
Meryl Streep on that? I don't know. I don't see it, Christian. Christopher Nolan movies. Nolan. Christopher Nolan movies for the captain if he wants. I need some popcorn. Yeah. He's thinking about it. What's he going to do? Good. He's a director himself. White Cheddar popcorn. Fisher's no, popcorn. Ocean City, Maryland. Nolan. If you're in that area, try so. Gonna take Nolan. Take a Nolan. All right, I'll ask. I'll ask the questions for Nolan. You know, here. Christopher Nolan. I know I'm gonna be gonna have four questions in the realm of Christopher Nolan. I know it's been a long time, Robert, but you don't actually need to write down your answers in round two. <laughs> you can go. set that whiteboard down and stop making a fool of yourself. <laughs> wow. Respect wow. the game. Wow, Burnett speech us there. All right, Burnett, here you go. Four I didn't write anything. Four questions. All right, here's your first one. Here's your... <laughs> here's your first one. All right, all right. Wally Pfister won his Best Cinematography Academy Award for which Christopher Nolan film? Uh... Dunkirk. Uh, the Dark Knight. It's incorrect for the two-point steal, Drew. Dunkirk. Looking for Inception. Inception. Oh, I was going yeah. to say that. Damn it. That's all right. Here we go. All right. Here's question. Question two. In Dunkirk, what is the name of the sailing vessel captained by Mark Rylance's character? I don't know. No, no, no answer. Go to multiple no. choice. Why are you help? I'll at least help you with that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. Okay, All multiple right. choice. The, well, I can't. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I don't know. So you said I don't know. So Drew, you could, you could. I don't know you what said, it. I don't know. I, what I don't answer. even know what it would be if All multiple right, so choice. Drew, for the two points deal. <laughs> I really needed you to go to multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's why he chose not to do it. <laughs> See? Right, no, Playing work. You know what? I've always liked this name, and this isn't what it is because it's in Pirates of the Caribbean. No, I can't do that. I can't just say the wrong answer. Five, uh, the four, three. The Maid Marion. <laughs> Looking for the Moonstone. The Moonstone. All right. Here's your next question three. The Moonstone? Question three. What is this, right. Pokemon? Dr. Man. Bunch of fairies. scientist who was one of the original astronauts sent through the wormhole in Interstellar. Matthew McConaughey? Incorrect for two point steal. Anne Hathaway for Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Oh, wow. All right. Hey, at least Robert Meyer Burnett gave an answer that time. That's true. He's All improved. right. So here is here is the fourth and He's final question better. here in Nolan. Finish this quote from The Dark Knight Rises. You don't fear death. You welcome it. Your punishment must be more severe. Blank. Severe. Choice. Is it A, creative, B, brutal, C, interesting, D, severe? D, severe. For one point. Congratulations. Your punishment must be more severe. One point. All right. So Robert Torture. scores a whopping one point in round two. And now we yes. move on to Andrew Guy, who's going to go for a spin. Now, if Andrew Guy can get something, if Andrew Guy gets something that he wants, he can really... Is someone like finish him? Was this Mortal Kombat? What was that? Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. Respin. Respin. Respinning on Kubrick. Repinning on... There we go. There it is. There's the spin. It's a better spin. Is it a better result? And? Landing on the blue. Spin again. <laughs> and here's the third spin. <laughs> you got to celebrate the wins in life. You yep. know? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell movies it is. Okay. Kurt Russell. Right. Matt Kearns would be proud. Maybe Matt Kearns has given him some, uh, some advice. Right. Four questions in the world of Kurt Russell, or as I call him, K.R. Legend. Ah. Uh, Andrew, you're uh, of four questions. For two points, which sports film finds Kurt Russell coaching the 1980 United States men's hockey team? Miracle. Gentlemen, uh, that would be Miracle. By two points. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Al Michaels. Your next question.
question for two more points. Which actress plays Kurt Russell's wife in the 1992 thriller Unlawful Entry? I love this movie. I just watched it. Is that a family film? <laughs> uh, multiple choice. Is it A, Andy McDowell, B, Demi Moore, C, Melanie Griffith, or D, Madeline Stowe? Madeline Stowe. Madeline Stowe. Ken Knapsack's favorite actress of all time. It is Madeline Stowe. Yay! For one point. All right, your next question for two more points, Andrew. In which Kurt Russell film will you find the quote, give my regards to King Tut? Starkey. Miles to Graceland. That is oh, incorrect for a two-point steal it's and Starkey. much needed Starkey. points. Robert. It's Starkey. Send it to Ra. We blasted him. Repeat the question. I can do that for a JTE rule. In which Kurt Russell film will you find the quote, give my regards to King Tut? Stargate. That's a big steal for Robert Meyer Burnett. Nice job, Rob. All right, last question. Your last question, Andrew. In the world of Kurt Russell, the greatest actor of all time. Kurt Allegedly. Russell first appeared in which Fast and Furious movie? Need the actual title of the film. Great franchise. It is. <laughs> and Furious Five. 7. That's a big get for Andrew. Two points guys. for Two Andrew. Points. What's the score? All right. 12 to 10, Andrew Guy. All right. 12 to 10. All right. <laughs> So we have now the overzealous match here in this match. Mark, <laughs> tell me the rules. <laughs> yes, the note to the crowd. Andrew Guy did not just win the match. Uh, Are you sure? Good if he gets his points right in this next round, because in round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. We need three numbers from each of you. Andrew's going to give us his numbers first. Then Robert Meyer Burnett has to pick different numbers. Each number corresponds to a different category of movie trivia, schmodown, knowledge. The first question you hear is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one is worth five. There is no stealing in round number three. Christian, Andrew Guy is going to give us his numbers that he feels Two. Lucky. Get used oh. to this. You'll see this a lot. Four, seven, and eleven. Four, seven, Not and eleven close. For Guy. Well, this is eleven, Guy I guess. Burnett. Thank you. Thank you. Two. There. Six. And thirteen. Two, see? Six. It's not hard to pick two. Two, six, and thirteen. Those numbers weren't terrible. He picked two. Damn it. He's going to go first here and try to tie the game here. He's going to try to tie. The crowd hates math. All right. So then he needs to hit this two. It is dramas. It is dramas. All right. Here you go. Robert, who stars as Benjamin? He's a widower looking to start over with his kids in a Cameron Crowe film called We Bought a Zoo. Matt Damon. For two points. Yeah! Matt Damon making his presence known in this match. <laughs> he missed Matt Damon the first time. He was determined like not to now? let that happen again. He did. Well, now... Uh, Andrew, your... <laughs> it's, it's... Your category is comedy. Um, <laughs> oh, it is? <laughs> Oh, and he, your question. He took four for his question. Oh, never mind. You took four. God! <laughs> Challenge! <laughs> but it's still a very likable category. All right. It's W.S. legend Will Smith. <laughs> and your question. For two points in the wild, wonderful world of Will Smith, who directed Will Smith in the film <laughs> Ali? Man. And five, four, mm, 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 two, mm. Antoine Fuqua. Looking for Michael Mann. Michael Mann. It's round three. So Can't do that. Man. So we're going to bounce now to Robert Meyer Burnett, who has category six, category six, which is fantasy sci fi. Oh, no. Here we go. Yeah, Robert. Robert. Yeah. All right, Robert, here we go. In the film Upgrade, who plays the lead? The Grey dove. Grace, who is implanted with the STEM technology? Five. Tom Hardy. Looking for Logan Marshall Green. Logan Marshall Green. So That's now we bounce one. to Andrew yeah. Guy. Andrew Guy. 
Not who I would have said, so I'll gladly be wrong with that. I just chances. bought that Blu-ray, too. And getting a W. Uh, you select the Category 7, and you get another well-abbed actor, and that is Brad Pitt. And your question, in the world of Brad Pitt, who played Robert Ford in the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford? Casey Affleck. Three points. All right. So Guy has just put himself in the position to win the game. Now, Burnett, Burnett has to hit his five-pointer. If he hits it, he goes, mm. it goes back to Guy. But if he misses, Andrew Guy wins the match. All right, here we go. You know, I got to say really quick, you ruined my 2019 season, but <laughs> good luck, man. All right, here we go. So hey, thanks, buddy. We have horror, <laughs> horror. Horror is the category. BP is the category. Here we go. Tony Amendola plays a disillusioned priest by the name of Father Perez in Annabelle and what other Conjuring Universe film? Very nice. Fine. Repeat the question. Second one. Tony Amendola plays a, a disillusioned priest by the name of Father Perez in Annabelle and what other Conjuring Universe film? He's got one more JTE rule. He does it. Wants to use it. <laughs> hey, Bye. we're friends. And oh, dear. Your winner! Dastardly! True guy! The answer was the, cur the curse of La Llorona. There's Billy Bedford. I knew he was supposed to be there, but and and they did big group hug, big group hug. Sometimes I surprise even myself. I was shocked that you said yes to Nolan because there's so many questions I can come up with. Yeah, I assumed Jen would not be there you know, since Jen is in the chat right I now. Second guess. So that would have been here, you weird. Second guess yourself and you shouldn't because it's usually your first answer is the right one. Now look, you know, the, this whole animosity with Guy, is it over now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, look, you got to respect your opponent. Because it's a game, but when you're off, when you're off stage, when you know what he's like in real life, which is a choker, you know, you can't. I gave him, I gave him, I gave him everything he wanted. I gave him everything he wanted. My Machiavellian genius led the family <laughs> to a place that we should have become victorious, but he couldn't handle the pressure. Got a lot going on in 2020 now. There's a whole new team. You're managing. Are you going to stay on the roster or are you just focused on your own team? Yeah, we'll see after this performance tonight, which was better than I thought, maybe. But what I got here is my golden boy. Except when you say, I don't know. This, this, 
This is what the burning droogs are all about. Somebody you don't see coming that will burn the game down. And that's what this golden boy has to offer. Yeah. Seems like there's a lot of faith in him. Where does that come from? Greatness. <laughs> Excellence. You know, you know, they used to call him the gator, but that means he like lives in Florida. Being a golden boy means he's gonna own the planet. Golden boy, the, the, those, are some, those are some strong words. Any thoughts? Look, everybody thought that Andrew Guy was gonna come out here and wipe the floor with Robert Meyer Burnett, and did that happen? Absolutely not, because we are a great team. <laughs> I sat in the green room and I made sure that he was ready for this match, and look what happened. He came within one question of beating Andrew Guy here. And you know what? I am ready for this. I am ready for this league. I know that I've got his support, and we're gonna we're gonna do some uh, some crazy things here. My last question for you: Since you know the whole mastermind <laughs> scheme, Bateman set this up. So, what do you think? Do you think he was giving? Do you think he was giving Guy a cut a gift or a curse? I think he was testing. Andrew, I think Bateman is almost as Machiavellian and almost the kind of genius that I am. And, um, and I think Ben Bateman is a surprise. You never know what he's going to do. And I think, you know, maybe he made the right choice, but I did show people that I'm better than you thought I was going to be. And I think that was what I wanted to do for the burning droogs. Lots of confidence going into 2020. Confident even in defeat. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. Thank you, Phoenix, on that one. Yeah. Andrew Guy will hear from in a second. But uh, yeah, Eric Burnett. Yeah, he did. He came out. He played. He, he did his thing. And he's got. He's. I think it was really also to showcase James. Doesn't Boyd. look like that jacket's going away anytime soon. <laughs> All right, now Andrew, come on up here. I got to talk to you as well. heal but look at the love that you have tonight action on me represent I, I have to say this matchup it was nail-biting at times were you surprised that he went so far with you <laughs> that is the best that Robert Meyer Burnett has done at <laughs> anything golf in his clap. whole life golf clap. that was the golden moment of his existence honestly I gotta say I gotta say I am shocked and slightly appalled that he did that well. But <laughs> thanks for making me look that much better. Uh, he's videotaping everybody. Oh dear. Hey, I'm on. So he's videotaping me. Videota he's videotaping the crowd that I'm like watching. That so that means he's videotaping me too. You looked under uh, control not how it that works. one Kurt Russell question. But you were under control pretty much the whole night. What was the philosophy going in? So the dastard has been the greatest entertainer you all have ever seen. And I, and I know that. I know that. But you know what? I've come so close so many times and I haven't quite gotten there. And what did I talk about tonight? I talked about respecting the game. Now, you remember some idiot that talked about this at the beginning of last year and his name is Ben Bateman. Now, do I respect Ben Bateman? No. Do I forgive Ben Bateman for being a traitor? Never. But he changed his tune and he won a belt. I'm with the greatest faction in the Schmodown now. And I'm gonna win a belt this year, and right now is the moment that shows you guys it's all about respecting the game. And that's Knowing I who I was playing. See, this is a beautiful way to go into the next matchup with corruption. Give us your thoughts on that coming up. <laughs> corruption. Chance and his teammate have ridden my mm. coattails for two years. Just like RMB, the only reason that anyone even talks about Chance's teammate is because of me. That is it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make him cry just like he always cries when he loses. And maybe he'll go back to being a face. I don't know. I'm really excited to find out what he's going to do. And he'll probably apologize for it along the way. Well, I guess it's really easy to say that you're happy that you came out of retirement right now. I came out of retirement for you. And I came out of retirement for her. And I'm going to leave you on this. Say goodbye Who's to the bastard and say hello to Debonair. Thank you, guys.
guys. Wow, thank you, Phoenix. Awesome, awesome. Devin Hare, Drew Guy, I like the sound of it. I, I like, like that. How about a hand for Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen? Phoenix Carnivale. Yeah, thank you, Phoenix. So, Andrew Guy. so apparently Debonair Drew Guy, who takes the, the match there, takes the win. He's now three and two. He's now three and two, and maybe, you know, he puts himself in a singles run. He does have a number one contender match with both himself and the Godfather against corruption, which will be happening this season. So he's right back on course to, you know, putting himself in that spotlight. Yeah, and look, I was very doubtful of Robert Meyer Burnett's ability to really do anything other than just drool onto the whiteboard right. after last season. But he played a nice match today, and I think he showed enough to warrant him being in his own faction if he wants to continue to compete or if he wants to step back and manage. But Get the performance, Andrew Guy made his arrival here tonight in a whole new way. It is a new era for him. Debbie so, Air. I think we're going to see a lot more of him. Maybe Debbie like, Air. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because I I'm going to call you Debbie Air Wolves guy. Damon walked out uh, against the Shire Wolves uh, when we were doing a live event in L.A., and they were booed out of the building. No, you're still turn, dastardly in my book. Screaming and yelling and cheering And your sidekick. It, it was a nice turn. Motley. It was a nice thing that, that he kind of earned it, that, that he did say, I'm respecting the game now. I want to play. And he played well. You know, he had some st stumbles in that second round, but he hit that big three-pointer and he won the game well you talk about screaming yelling and cheering this crowd's gonna be doing a whole lot of that <sighs> this next matchup now that's right, cool we have the number one contender match now how we got here was a little different we were supposed to have an inner geekdom championship match between the current champion kevin the smasher smets yeah! that's right and the number one contender the former champion the amazing mara kanopic now, if you watch the, the awards, there was a circumstance that Mara just is not physically right now able to compete. Um, she will be back in action Earned it. soon. We're hoping between February and March. We're hoping. We're going to keep a, an eye on it to see that match will happen. But because of that, it left a spot here. Now, Dan Merle had made it clear at one point that he just wanted to focus on teams. He's a current team's champion. And that he was going to go in and intergeek him. He said, I'm out of singles. I've won the title three times. When the opportunity arose, you know, interesting. He, he, in the rankings, he defended the title when he, when he won it last time. He had an opportunity to, to face in a number Who one Who I match. believe is there. He, arose, he said, you know what, I'll do it. And Bibiani was the one to face. And Bibiani goes, well, yeah, I'll do it. But I'm also going to use that number one contender match that I won. And I'm going to give it to my teammate. What a guy. And he did that. And now we have a triple threat match here today. Made this match more entertaining. Made New York a lot more fun. And we're about to get it on here in the movie Trivia Schmodown. And we'll show you exactly how we got to where we are right I mean those are three those are three mark three unfortunately they had a little flub there so I'm gonna end up having to uh, triple threat to number edit one that match that was uh, and, uh I mean look, that was a little so Dan unexpected Rowe, a three -time but um he's the current team's yeah. champion he's defended live numerous amounts of time we'll do it live Tom effort Ragino, the and then we'll do it live again effort today. And the way that it works this year, that the faction, if they do not have their manager present, that the manager can choose anyone from the faction to serve as manager. Dagnino chose Ben Bateman. So Ben Bateman, the champion, will be walking out with Dan Merle. Now, Coy Jandrew is part of the Mouthy Mercs. Obviously, he runs the faction. He will be here with both the kid, Brendan Meyer, and William Bibiani. Uh, Coy Jandrew, noted stand-up comedian, will be well, walking him out. Right. And, uh, it's exciting. I mean, what I'm really looking for in this matchup is, is somehow because William and, and the kid work so well together and now they're splintered off, it's almost like are we splitting votes with them and forgetting that Dan Merle can also just blow everybody out of the water. It's a great question, though. It's like we've seen them so many times play together, minus like an exhibition game. And complement each other's strengths. Right. So what are they going to do for entrances, now facing off against I want each Bibiani other. to come out as the kid. I want the kid it. to come out as Bibiani. I want them to and play as, each, as the other. other. So, and, now and then, against, uh, so they can just jump the shark, also and then the Jaws music can play, Dan Merle can walk out in a shark suit, and, and, so and then the kid Bibiani and Bibiani can just jump the shark. Perfect entrance. I'm a genius. And Dan Merle, who wasn't even looking at the singles title, but what if, what if he gets to Atlanta to play Bateman and can become a four-time champion? I mean, that's... 
unheard of in this league, and it's possible if anybody can do it, it's Dan Merle. It's nuts. I got the Spirit Airlines app ready to book one of them a flight to Atlanta. Spirit? Let's see what happens. Yay. Before everybody we, loves Spirit. Everybody know, for everybody watching, it's, it's, I mentioned it's the, the free-for-all. Why and I always take know, when I go out to L.A. of the free-for-all. He has stayed from, from number one all the way to the end. It was end. very he ironic. Was before. Going to L.A. for the free-for-all free on an airline the called is The Spirit. Events, and it happens March 21st, downtown Los Angeles. Tickets are on sale now. So you can get them. It was packed last year. Over 650 people last year. We can do it again this year. Get your tickets to schmodownlive.com. All right. So with that. I'd like to be able to attend, but unfortunately, I think it's not going to It's not gonna work out for me this year, which sucks. Movie trivia. trivia. Schmodown. Yeah. The free for all was a lot of fun to attend last year. The Unfortunately, the schedule. I ended up uh, leaving at a bad time for work-related things, but I still did it. It's probably not going to work out this year, though, which is a bummer, bummer, bummer. Wait, they're going to come out together. Yeah, that is Nico. I should have known it was Nico. Only Nico would wear tie dye in, in Brooklyn. Yes, of course. So interesting. Kid wearing apocalypse now shirt. That's right, and we also saw we we also saw Koi Andrew just ran out of here, ran as fast out as the dough. Athletic. Because and his opponent representing the Mouthy Mercs and Shazam. Hmm, this sounds familiar. This sounds familiar too. This sounds different. Looks like something Dagneo would wear. That sounds familiar too. I wonder who he's talking about. City. Now, for my money, the two best players hard stop any category right here. I am honored. I am flattered. I am enamored. Look at this man's jacket. In his Catterday best, putting in the work. I have many tigers on my jacket. It's true. 
and nobody knows Cadbury better than him. After most people in this room and knows more than most people in this room ever will. Absolutely incredible. And yes, we are facing one of the very rare people to beat me in a movie fight. But for me, for my money, it's like the Yankees and the Red Sox. And I know you guys are in New York, but it gets, you know. And I gotta say, the Red Sox did end up winning. Oh, oh. Like it's going here. Know your audience. Know your audience. You gotta read the room, Christian. I had, I had to say it here. I had to say it here. Well, don't worry. I'm a nose fan. What, what am I gonna do? Oh yeah. Well. Now these two right well, here. Well, we locked 120 the games. They talk the talk. They know their stuff. And we are here as a faction. We've also got the incredible Mara Kanopic, who is here repping the Matthew Mercs as well. Actually, it's the amazing Mara Kanopic. Know your team as well as you know your fans. I anyone like these players in any sport. What this man can do by standing for six hours and what this kid can do by standing for five hours. I cannot wait to see this today. I'm so excited to be here, and I cannot wait to see these guys somehow both win. I think they're both going to win. It's going to be great. <laughs> So Coy Jandrew, Coy Jandrew, taking, making, and making a play for his players. All right. And their opponent. You said hi to me. Or maybe. And he loves New York. I'm like, coy. Who likes the Red Sox and me who likes the O's and we're not going to talk about them. Uh, they stink! That right. is the most kick-ass Jaws music I have ever yeah, that's heard. That's really good. That's what he came into when he faced uh, Ethan Irwin. That's right. It's the way the scoreboard yeah. goes. Can we switch yeah. you two well, characters no, it's, around? It's oh, the way it's the way it is. Goes. Oh, all right. You all see... Right. Adults have a thing called money. I know. And well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, what I'm, I've seen. Uh, we don't have a line. Boom, 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 boom. All right, that ladies and awesome. gentlemen, we have, we have all three competitors there. Round number one will start very soon. Mark, how does round one go? Uh, round triple number threat? one. It is a triple threat, Christian. Yes. Thanks for pointing that out. But round number one is going to feel like a normal round number one because the field of competitors will hear eight questions from eight different categories of movie trivia. Schmodown. I'm willing to bet, though, I will not get no six question. questions no right in this one. one. You Unlike the first match. On your teammates' knowledge for round number one or for any round. You sure. And I, I promise you, you may not consult with your teammate. Be helpful. In any round no, they in may this not. match. <laughs> you each have three JTE rules. Uh, if you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat it, buy yourself some time for dramatic purposes. Use a JTE rule. Once we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. You gentlemen have been here before. The crowd's been here before. I think they know how to do it. crowd's that. been here for a while, a couple hours. We'll start with Dan Merle. Dan, are you ready? Let's do this. The kid, are you ready? I'm ready. Mr. William Bibiani. It's hot up here. 
It is sweaty up here, and that means I'm ready for a three-way. <sighs> then let's get Ow! ready to Shmoda! Yay! Oh, here we go. Round number one, three rounds. Here we go. The first, first category, action adventure. Action adventure. Who was the star in the martial arts action films Fist of Fury and The Way of the Dragon? You a... Uh, I know you like watching the uh, the MMA and stuff. You a martial artist? You I ever am? take a uh, oh. karate? Oh, I, my daughter has taken way more lessons than I have. I'll tell you that. Yeah, she could beat the crap out of both. Absolutely. Of them. And five, four, it is the dragon. Three, Bruce Lee. Two, one. We start with Dan. Bruce Lee. Yes, the kid. Bruce Lee. Yes, and William. The incomparable Bruce Lee. There we go. All right, that's number one. All right. Your next question. In the world of 90s movies, movies that were released in the 90s, 90s, 90s what music star played a psychotic character named Bishop in the 1992 crime thriller Juice? It's <laughs> <laughs> not True really story. the right yelling right answer, so that's, no, it that's fine. Not, that's okay. we'll, we'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> and five, four, three. I am not sure. Two. One, we start with Brendan. Tupac? Yes. Oh. And William. William. Oh, uh, Tupac Shakur. Yes. And Dan? Tupac Shakur. There you go. Oh. Tupac Dan. Very nice. All right. All right. Here we go. Next category is dramas, gentlemen. Dramas. Who played Mary Poppins author P.L. Travers in Saving Mr. Banks? Where do you stand on Mary Poppins? Would you hire to babysit your kids? Who would you rather have, her or Chris Parker from Adventures in Babysitting? Oh, Mary Poppins. She's very... very the incorrect answer. Five. Four. Take the kids to Detroit. Three, I got nothing. No, no not two, Detroit. One. And we start with William. Yes, everyone's favorite film about how a corporation heroically destroyed a woman's <laughs> art, Emma Thompson. That's correct. Oh. <laughs> Did you write all that down? Uh, no. Dan? Uh, what Bibiani said, Emma Thompson. <laughs> and Brendan? Emma Thompson. Look at this. Tie game all the way around. Tie game all the Except way around. Except for me, right, because what do you expect? Next question is in the world of new releases. These are films that have been released fairly soon, uh, back then. Who plays Neil Armstrong? Who plays Neil Armstrong in the film First Man? Uh, Dan probably should know this. Oh, Burnett just got this wrong in the locker room. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. I can't Dan. remember. You can ask me the whole cast of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Gosling. Correct. That's yeah, right. That it is Ryan Gosling. Uh, Brandon Meyer. For me, uh, Ryan Gosling. Yes, and William. Uh, Ryan Gosling, and I drew a little goose in a bow tie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. So it's Ryan uh, Gosling. Ryan just ah! me, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Right, MD Legend. Show. All right, here we go. This is fantasy sci-fi. Yeah, he agreed. Fantasy sci-fi. Who played Army Colonel Jack O'Neill in 1994 Stargate? <laughs> <laughs> you were watching the first match. It helps to study the matches. You got to look at the last match. Yeah. It helps. Well, you got to put them work in. Well, they didn't know that was going to come up the writers. You know, they didn't know. We could have so changed it. I turned it my mother. Five, <laughs> four. Uh, they didn't know. Is it Three, Kurt Russell? Oh. Two, it's all. I blame the reader of the question. One. And we start with uh, Brendan. I hope it's Kurt Russell. <laughs> yes. And William? Kurt Russell says, yes. what the hell? Kurt, yes. Kurt all right, there we go. So it was a good, you're, you're all welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> what can they say <laughs> except right, you're, you're welcome? In the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by Hannah Rodgers. Right you just got Which right. Which actress provides the voice of weather girl Sam Sparks in the film Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Ooh. Oh, look at the kid. Your, uh, your wife famous for making delicious uh, meatballs. Oh, I was going to say you, you answered my wife. Is it, it's not the my answer wife. is your wife. There's yeah. some voiceover on the side. Five. Four. When she's not ironing the three, pants that you forgot to take with you. Two. Kristen Wiig. Hands down, please. And we start with William. Anna Ferris? Yes. Oh. Yes. I, got and, I didn't know it. No, it's Dan didn't have it. Yeah, and, and the kid didn't have it, so only wow. William gets it. Wow. 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 Well, Anna Jimmy Ferris. Takes the first point. <laughs> All right, he takes the first one. That's big. 
All right, there you go. All right. Is that me? Okay. All right, here we go. Horror Thriller is your seventh uh -huh. horror thriller. Which film in the Scream franchise takes place mainly in Hollywood during the filming of a Stab sequel? Well, Take it easy. at least I just got to guess a Scream sequel. Um, How many of these things have there been? Eight? I don't care. Too many. Five, <laughs> nine, four, three. Scream three. Two is the answer. Two, one, pens down, Dan. Scream 3? Yes. Yay! And Brendan? Scream 3. Yes, William? Uh, the woefully underrated Scream 3, and I drew a ghost face. Wow. So William Bibiani is still perfect here. I don't mind so horror questions like that, now, where they're just like, William guess a movie and franchise. Will a chance for a perfect round. If he gets this right, he, he and only he will get a bonus question. Here we go, Mark. Yay, number eight is a Thank Patreon you. question from Andy Schick. How about a big hand? Andy! Andy not using his razors anymore, but thank you, Andy. Oh, Andy well. Andy wanted a question in the category of comedy. <laughs> one guy in the back putting a lot of gusto. You know? Like me. Your last question in round number one in the world of yuck yucks. In Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Name one of the two actresses that play Alice and Tatiana who answer their ad and accompany them to Hawaii. You don't need to oh, specify wait, oh, is this not the, who played oh, what sorry. character. Yeah, no, it's not the bonnet. <laughs> oh, I thought that was, sorry. I'm good thing I was paying attention. My gosh. What, sorry. Uh, they didn't ask about the two. Five. They didn't ask for a repeat. Four. Oh, I got it. I got it. Three. Two. I don't know. One. Pens down, please. And we start with Brandon. Anna Kendrick. Yes. Mm. And William. Aubrey Plaza. Yes. And Dan. Aubrey Plaza. Yes. All right. Very so nice, William bitch. Gets a perfect round. William Bibiani, once again, in his career, pulls off another perfect round. Are you surprised? No! another one in the record books for William Bibiani. All right, so... Gotta get more comfortable. William, this is for you and only you. Thank you. Here's your You don't have to write this down. You simply have to answer. Sit down. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, here we go. This iconic actress starred opposite Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart in the classic 1940 film, The Philadelphia Story. Catherine Hepburn. For one more point, William Bibiani. It's like he knows this all stuff. The way through, nine to seven to seven, he finds himself two points over both Dan Merle and the kid. Round I mean, two, Mark, how's that go? You know, Bibiani, nine points, it's, that's the headline, but the other two, seven points, they're no slouches either. No, so it's big. Still and anyone's ball? And, and me, um, from this before, so two. What happens here. The wheel round I'm on fire. Initiated, thanks to Mr. Ben Goddard, one more time for Ben. Bringing the wheel. Don't, don't chant it. No, don't chant it. You'll make him run away in shame. gets a spin at the wheel once you settle on a category you're going to hear four questions from said category each question's worth two points there's no penalty for missing a question however stealing is available in round number two because this is a triple threat match the way it works is if you are not being asked the question keep your whiteboard keep your marker write down your best attempt at an answer in case the opportunity to steal should arise then we will ask you by name to reveal your answer at the same time you verbalize it into the microphone a lot like round number one uh dan merle is sitting right there actually he's standing but william bibiani is way down there and he has the lead nine points do you want to spin first william or would you like to defer thanks for making that weird mark uh yeah i'm gonna uh defer to my opponent all right so he is gonna defer to dan merle but dan can defer if he would like to like a white elephant party. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna defer to Brendan. So you go, Brendan Meyer will spin first. Uh, I'll defer to uh, defer. the Ben. I'll defer <laughs> to uh, the Goddard. <laughs> All right, so the kid is gonna spin first, and here's the spin. As Ken Knapsack says, the spin is in. The spin is in. Round around it goes, Christian, and it is middle earth. Middle earth. earth. You want to keep it? Or you you want to keep spin that, again? Brendan? You think you Ooh. should? No. Yeah. All right, spinning away from it. Again. Spin again. Okay. Let's really test them, this wheel. Spin again. Horror. 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 Right. Ooh. Yeah, that's good for William. Ooh. That's good for William. Come on, wheel. That is you effing William. wheel. All right. Horror. Horror so I'm, is, is spin again actually on we'll that wheel? Questions here in horror. All right, Maybe Brandon. that's the thing. Four question in the world of horror movies, which I have just been told still give you nightmares. <laughs> I don't even watch them. So. No, I'm just oh, I'm just one day I'm you'll just be kidding. old enough 
Ah. Uh, so the way it works for the steal for you guys, make sure that when the question is being asked, you write. What are you doing? I'm just I just told him. I just we, want to make sure that the audience knows again. Just told, you weren't listening to my rules. You never listened rules. to my rules. Isn't and it this nice? Is, now we have Don't to do it for the bitch. Cat bite. These guys know it's my first schmodown. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Is it the audience's first schmodown, William? Okay, here we go. Uh, I am going to turn this car around. Uh, back to No the ice cream for anyone. Brendan. For two points, yeah. Haley Joel Osment can see dead people in M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. Ah. Who plays his mother, Lynn Sear, in the film? Tony Collette. Two points. Uh -huh. All right. Oscar for Tony. Yes, thank you. All right. All right, here's it was next. last year. Let's get over it. Um, <laughs> Brendan, for two more points, what horror film stars Karen Gillan as a woman trying to exonerate her brother who was convicted for murder by proving the crime was caused by a supernatural mirror? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and five. I, 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 I am going to go multiple choice on this. You know, I just can, I got to be safe. I can't be. It's, uh, is it A, mirrors, B, Oculus? C, Shattered Glass, or D, The Broken? The Broken. Oculus. One point. Oh. And that wasn't what I thought it was, so I'm glad I went multiple choice. All right, here's the uh, third. Your penultimate question in round number two. In 13 Ghosts, F. Murray Abraham's character dies, leaving his home to Arthur, his nephew, and a widower with two children, played by which Galaxy Quest actor? Sam Rockwell. Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. Good, good, good pull by the kid. Thirteen ghosts. Good the thirteen the ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Almost the same kind of movie. All right, Brandon. One more question in round number two. Valak is the name of this demon who possesses a little girl in this 2016 horror film. Could you, could you repeat the question? Certainly. Uh, for a JTE rule, Valak is the name of this demon who possesses a little girl in this 2016 horror film. Five. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do multiple choice. Four. You can provide that. Is it A, The Conjuring 2, B, Lights Out, C, Blair Witch, or D, The Devil's Dolls? Conjuring 2. Blair Witch? That is incorrect. Oh, so for a one-point steal, we're going to ask Dan. William, have give you all, written your attempt? But give him the multiple also. Hmm. I don't need it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, darn. I'm good. Yeah. And your attempt is? Conjuring 2. That is correct, yeah. William. It's the Conjuring 2, although I don't think Valak actually possesses her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that might actually I mean, be if a, not, not, That might be worth challenging. Not, I'm gonna, I don't know if my manager wants to challenge that, because I think Valak is actually haunting Vera Farmiga. And the little girls are actually uh, being haunted by by the Enfield poltergeist. Wow. How much of a move, smart move that is, Hold I have on, no idea. Hold on, one second. We'd like one second to confirm that we want to challenge this. Are you challenging? Well, no, you can't, you can't look it up. You're not going to challenge right. it. That's, that's, not, that's not how it works. <laughs> I think you should challenge it. Challenge it. Challenge it for Brendan. You're going to put challenge in the challenge. Challenge it for Brendan. All right. The challenge is in here by... Coy, can you come here and challenge us? What is the official challenge? Pretty <laughs> confident. <laughs> Please don't curse in front of the children that are here. Thank I you so apologize. much. I apologize. I didn't know it was written. Yeah, so they're, they're just challenging inaccurate question. We are coming back. Thanks to everybody who enjoyed that commercial. Um, we have uh, conferred... <laughs> that commercial was sponsored by Wendy's. We are going to rule that William Bibiani is correct in his challenge. The nun Valak did not actually possess the little girl. And so now we have to backtrack because that was a question that was asked originally to Brendan Meyer. So what we're going to do is ask Brendan another question for his last one in the world of horror movies. So unfortunately for Brendan, he has to go back to the scary movieville one more time. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I got my holy water. <laughs> so you don't need to worry about Valak. That only possesses adults. Um, in the film... Yeah, I keep my challenge. Yes, he does keep... William keeps his challenge. In the film Shaun of the Dead, which actor plays Philip, Shaun's stepfather? 
You know what? I I can't I can't I I have to be honest. I got I did get this question. Oh, for God's sakes. And I it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, Every, all right, all right. Bill Nye. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we so let me no don't challenge because we made an announcement on the thing that every question that we've used in the past can come back in previous matches. That counts. Stop they challenging. Made the announcement that counts. I was trying to be good, but that counts. Here we go. All right. That counts. Authoritative. You can come, you can come on. Well, it's his time. That counts, now, yeah. Ben. You can't. That counts. Come on, man. He's coming up. Come on, man. That counts. Very specifically. That counts. No, that counts, Ben. What are you ask? What are you coming up for? That counts because you're putting Middle Earth on the wheel. That counts. Come on. Come on. You're putting Middle Earth on the wheel. That counts. Come on. We already announced. We already announced. We already announced. We already announced that this whole season would be coming back. So. All right, ladies so, and gentlemen, gets heated. It gets heated. Welcome to the movie I trivia know, showdown. It, it gets heated. Uh, Brendan Meyer is currently up fourteen yeah. to nine to seven. So now, William, it is. You can't throw out all the questions that Dan. have been Dan asked. Dan You're not going to have any questions left. The match, Dan Merle, with his spin. Here we go. Back at it. Spin again. Spin again. All right, Dan. Two spins. Okay, so spin again is actually on the wheel. Okay. Round and round it goes. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. All right, she is a popular actress. Yeah. You can confirm with them. Popular actress. Natalie Portman. Would no. you take it? Would you keep it? Depends. I mean, you know, Dan definitely knows. Uh, Natalie. Natalie. You know, Natalie. What else is he aiming for? Like he says, is it, it's it's slice hunting here. But you've got to make a decision here in in five seconds here, Dan. If you're gonna keep it or not. Five. Gonna keep it. Gonna keep yeah, Natalie keep Portman. It. All right, here we go. No, so we're gonna All get right. four questions in okay. Natalie Portman. Here we go. Great. Natalie. Four questions that I will not know the answer. Natalie. Well, that sounds for me. Why are you so late? One. Why are you so one, late? Natalie Portman. I already did that. Appearance in which Michael Mann film? Heat. Correct for two points. All right. It's your movie. That's right. That's your film. Question two. And Natalie Portman plays the warrior Isabel in this 2011 comedy. Your Highness. Yes. For two more points. Right. It's a very funny movie. Yeah. All right. This next question here. Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac star in this 2018 drama. You're going to say something? Annihilation. Yes. And the fourth wow. question. <laughs> Natalie Portman makes a cameo as the president's daughter in which 90s comedy? Mars Attack. For two more points, wow. Dan Merle. 15 points on the board. Big move. So you got 15 points here. 15 takes the lead. To 14 to 9. Yeah, so now Dan has a perfect second round. Puts himself in a good spot here because William Bibiani has to spin. So now Bibiani spinning. Dan Merle has a great second round. And now Bibbs takes the spin. <laughs> All right, Bibbs figuring out his strategy for the spin. There it goes. Wheel of Morality turns her turn and tells the lesson we should learn. Oscar movies. Yeah, I'll take it. He's going to keep it. I'll take it. Keep Oscar. All right. Okay. All right, William, I'll be asking you your Oscar questions. You're first of four in this category for two points. Warren Beatty has been nominated in over four different Oscar categories. For which one has he won his only Oscar? Just need the category. Best director. That is correct. Yeah. For the movie Red. Two points. Uh, well, now I can't Roy submit Roy that Oscar question for Patreon. Thanks, Ellis. For an Academy Award seven times. What film got him his first nomination? His first nomination? Five, four, three, two. Oh, Joyce, Last that is incorrect, so for a two-point steal, oh. uh, Brendan and Dan can write down choice, just make the sure. attempt, but you may not ask for multiple choice because Which, William did not yeah, opt. I got it. Dan? The Last Picture Show? Correct. Ah. The Last Picture Show. Ah. So both go oh, up God. there on Bibiani there. So it's now 17, 16, 11. It's a big steal. Big steal. Big steal. It's a big steal, but William does have two questions left in the world of Oscars. Uh, William, your penultimate question in this round. 
Who received Best Director nomination for the classic films A Foreign Affair, Stalag 17, and Witness for the Prosecution? Billy Wilder. Two points. All right. So nice job. William has 17 one more. He didn't get that one. To now 13. And your last question, William. In the world of the Oscars. Name this best picture winning film on the synopsis. A young nurse tends to a badly burned plane crash victim. The English patient. There you go. <laughs> Flashback right, so. reel involvement in a fateful love affair. That but is at the end of the second round now, now Dan Merle's in charge. 17, 16, 15. Ooh. Now the manager's... I heard him say I should have went multiple choice, and he's not wrong. This is the well, you guys, we, Coy, we Coy, Coy, you, Coy, you got to confer with your guys. There. You can't, not as a team, but separately. Okay, so 17, 16, 15, as we get to round number three here. This is Intense. what we expected. Yeah. We, maybe we thought we'd get here a little quicker, but... We're here, round number three, and it's as close as it could possibly be, unless it's time. It's been Only 83 years. Only the kid has used the repeat. So now the champ walks off, and now we have Dan Merle, Meyer, oh and dear. Bibiani. Going to get comfortable 16, ball again. 15. Crazy score here. All right, give me the rules for round Ugh. number three. The third and final round. In round number three. Great match so far. The field of competitors Chat's is going crazy. Going to give us a series of no numbers. surprise there. Numbers from each competitor. These numbers can range Again, from I, I'm one so to 20. You may not pick the same number. It's a shame I haven't been able to do more of these live shows more often of on reaction, just because the first question you hear I had a feeling that they would all be like this, but unfortunately, just never could be able to do them points. because of a uh, shoddy internet. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. Kid and a two-point lead over William Bibiani. You may select your numbers first from one to twenty. Which three ones do you like best? Eight, one, and sixteen. All right. Eight, one and sixteen for Merle, for the kid. No two uh, there. Two nine and four. Try again. Two nine and four for the kid yeah. and for the yeah. for the Roy, kid. Uh, go the kid. And nineteen. Seven three and nineteen for William. William will go first here with the two pointer, and that's category number seven for William. I'll get that for William Bibiani. Oh, right. oh, White and Bear. All right, William Pixar. Okay. What was Pixar's third theatrically released film that was released in 1999? Toy Story 2. Yes, sir. All right, so he ties Merle. So now. Meyer will go. Brendan Meyer will go, Mark, and he chose uh, category number two. He did, and that corresponds to, it's certainly a category your teammates are great at, Oscar movies, Oscar films. And He's good at it, too. Two points, Brendan. A question. What actor won best actor in 19... Night is the 89 Oscars, but the film came out in 1988 for his role in Rain Man. Oh. <laughs> Justin Hoffman. That's yeah, you're going to just give it to him right at the end there. <laughs> All right, so now we go to Dan Merle. <laughs> now we go to Dan Merle, who Dan Merle gets category eight, 90s movies, Dan, mm -hmm. 90s movies, in the film Jurassic Park, <laughs> who plays the park owner, John <laughs> Hammond. <laughs> Sir Richard Attenborough. Yes, sir. Two uh, more whoa, points. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang right. on. Hang on one second. What? No, no, no. You don't have to tell us. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I want to challenge this, actually, because he is not Sir Richard Attenborough. Oh, he is Lord oh, Richard come Attenborough. come on. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If you put it in there, it should be in Really? Okay. And that's not accurate. The challenge is in. Yeah, you the want to challenge is in. Right. It changes their name. Ladies and gentlemen, we have conferred. Amongst We're going to let it slide. We're going to let it slide. Never mind. Wait, no, you're, ready, you're ready challenged. You I'm, not the challenge. I'm, I'm rejecting the challenge. You can't it's reject fine. it. You put, it's the, fine. you put the challenge in. The challenge is in. Okay. The challenge is Was in. Was he Sir Richard Attenborough? You put the challenge the in. The challenge is in, and it has been overruled. The answer is Richard Attenborough. We accept Sir Richard Attenborough <laughs> as an answer. And we move on with our lives. I'm Sir Lord Richard Attenborough. So is fine with that. So 1918, 17. 19, 18, 17. And now, Christian, it pinballs back to William Bibiani, who now has to answer his three point question. Yeah, William needs to hit the three point. That got a little awkward there. Right, here we go. I'm not going to lie. Here we go. Famous actors and actresses, William. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. 
This 1980s action superstar was originally considered for the role of Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. Sylvester Stallone. Yes, for three points. All right, All right. William Bibiani back in the lead. Yeah. And so we keep seeing, it's like a three-way seesaw. So is it 19, Dan has? 19? <laughs> All right, so. Thank you. 20 to 19 to 18. And right, now we so go now on to Brendan, who's the got kid Meyer. three-pointer. All right, Brendan, you selected number nine, <sighs> which is an odd number. <laughs> And Three it corresponds the question? Is it to the world of romantic comedies. We're going to challenge What? We're going to challenge any question. Which one? Because it's originally considered as conjecture. It's casting news. We're going to do the research. <laughs> okay, <laughs> do, do you want to initiate that challenge? But the category is famous actors and actors. Is Sylvester Stallone ever said that? All right. Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Challenge. Man, we, we are just... Now it has been 83 years. <laughs> it has been 83 years now. Um, the challenge uh, was originally brought up because it's, it's, it's casting news. Uh, it Maybe it's some sort of conjecture. Um, however, it is the ruling of the judges that it is related to movies in some capacity. And so we will allow the question to be asked and the points to be awarded. So the challenge is over. They've asked questions like this before. Come on. So 1918, 20, no, Brendan Meyer, Brendan Meyer now, Brendan Meyer has category number nine. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Brendan Meyer. Once again, you selected number nine. I said it was an odd number. We had a good laugh. And then I said romantic comedies is the category. And your question for three points, which five romantic comedy was written, directed, and stars Billy Crystal and co-stars Deborah Winger? Five, four, three. Uh, repeat the question. I can do that. Second Which one. 1995 rom-com was written, directed, and stars Billy Crystal and co-stars Deborah Winger? Originally, they were going to have Stallone. Uh, forget Paris? Wow. Wow, we got it. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. Three points. So Brennan you get more than a golf clap for that one. You get, you get the Jason Garrett clap. Dan Merle. Dan Merle now gets a three-pointer. This is fun, man. Yeah. So many lead changes. This is exactly like a college basketball game in March Madness because there's so many lead this changes. This would be like the date 10 of 500 in about a month from now. Is it 2019? 19, 19, 21, 20. So Dan Merle now he hits his three pointer. All right, Dan, you chose category one famous what? actors and actresses. <laughs> Owen Wilson has been directed by Wes Anderson six times. Name three of them. You have 20 seconds. Name three of them. The Royal Tenenbaums, the Darjeeling Limited, and Bottle Rocket. Correct. Dan Merle now goes up 22, 21. Actually, it's, actually it's Sir Bottle Rocket. So William Bibiani needs to hit his five-pointer. I kid, I kid. William Bibiani needs to hit his five-pointer to stay in the game. If he does Thank not, you, <laughs> if he does not, then he will be eliminated. Thank you. I love you too. All right, here we go, Mark. He Thank chose you. category 19. He did so do that nice tonight. <laughs> Thank you so he, uh, much. He chose category 19. Uh, William, this corresponds to the world of spy movies. Okie dokie. Okie dokie dokie. Mm. Was it Spy Kids? <laughs> and your question for five points and the lead for now mm. in the film Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. What is the name of the international terrorist organization led by Solomon Lane? Ooh. <laughs> Stay in the game. Five, four, three, two. Can I go with my gut? The syndicate. One. Wow! He got it! Yeah. Five points! Wow! wow. Big move. So he puts himself 25 I uphold you in every direction because I don't know what direction you would actually be in, Bibbs. But there you go. 22. Dan has 22. Bibiani, 25. Meyer needs to hit his five. If Meyer hits his five, he will eliminate Growl. Bibiani. All right. All right. The kid you chose, kid you chose number four. If you hit this, William is eliminated. Oh. 
Oh, oh dear. If you well, miss, I can't beat if him. you I miss, have to say it like that. If you oh, miss, yeah, be so mean. <laughs> oh, that's so, even worse. Here we go. All right, here Not we go. in our hearts, Brendan. All right. Never in our hearts. All right. Brendan, here we go. Fantasy sci fi is your category. Okay. Fantasy sci fi. All right. In the film Blade Runner 2049, who plays Sapper Morton, who's a Nexus 8 monocle replicant that Kay is sent to retire at the beginning of the film? Dave Batista. That is correct. Wow. And with that, William. Wow, Ayani that's a shame. Has been eliminated. What a performance. Wow, oh. great performance by the kid. Knocking out his teammate. And you get eliminated? Are you kidding Crazy. me? Crazy. Crazy. Very nuts. Wow. All right. Brandon! Brandon! Wow. All right. Here we go. Yeah, All right, I mean, so nice that's... ovation for William Viviani. There is uh, still some business at hand, and that would be... Yeah. Dan Merle now has a five-point question to win the game. That's right. Oh, dear. Dan Merle dear. hits this. He has 27 points, and that means he goes on to play his faction That means mate you win, title. my friend. However, you win. If he misses it, <laughs> the kid, Brendan Meyer, will be going to Atlanta to be playing the champion who beat him in the tournament last year. All right, Mark, he chose number 16. That's right, and Joe Montana's legendary number corresponds got to, to talk about, movie quotes. Got to talk about Joe Montana because it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. In the Brent's Super Bowl. Movie no. Let's see if Dan Merle is. Dan, your question for the five points and the win. What 1989 romantic comedy features the line, I gave her my heart, she gave me a pen? He's got it. Say anything. And you're winner! Yeah. Dangerous! Oh. Oh. Wrong. Wrong theme. Wrong theme. I'm sure this would be edited, though, so you're going to wonder what I'm talking about. But they're playing the wrong theme right now. Unless this is the new victory theme. I'll just create my own theme. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's Final Fantasy. It's not my own created dream. Uh, let's, let's just try to... Dum the 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 dum High, high power chords. I like that they're testing out a uh, new um, the manager of the day command or uh, commentators. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love, I love you, Kyle. Um, are you, are you guys, you could just start calling me pale, frumpy, Jen Sturger. That's fine. <laughs> that could, you guys could call me that. All right, are you guys, how, what about that match? Woo! Challenge that match. Was that match. a number one contender match, or was that a number one contender match? First up, I've got to talk to Shazam as a team. Shazam, come on up here. Both Bibiani and Brendan, come on up, come on up. What a match. Give what a, a hand. match for these Give guys. Give him a hand. It really was a hell of a match. Come on, come on up. Amazing, look at this. Look at the reaction. Bibs, Bibs, I'm coming, I'm coming to you first. All right. Bibs, I am coming to you first. I'm, hi. How, how are you? I'm doing really good, how are you? That's the, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm having a great weekend. Bibs, you had a challenge 
and, this, and it actually helped your teammate pass you in round two. And then your teammate knocked you out. Talk to me about what you're feeling right now. Well, I hadn't thought about he didn't actually knock me out, he just beat me. But that's fine, and I'm actually so proud of you because um, that was a misleading question. And I'm really, really glad that I was able to uh, get him one that, you know, wasn't misleading. Yes, and that's, that's why I got it wrong, because I was misled. Not because I didn't know. Ah! Sure. I named right. this faction so perfectly, like, this is this mouthy Mark Assembly, like, these guys, like, I love how well they work together. Like, what an incredible duo. I just, I'm so proud of them, guys. What an, and what an actor, uh, we all know. He's a professional actor. That was, I believed every word of that. So, the other thing I want to ask you, babes, <laughs> you've lost to Dan Merle. He is, do you feel like he is your kryptonite? You have only lost to him. I've, I've lost to several and, people, actually. And quite, no. badly. <laughs> quite badly, I've lost. I'm saying when you're playing. <laughs> okay, well. I think, I think I, I don't know, if, see, if it's kryptonite, I think uh, it would only affect one person, but I think, you know, if it just affects everybody, it's just a deadly weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are considering Dan Merle a deadly weapon in the schmodown. Yeah, no, I think, I think actually he needs to be registered with the government and only used... <laughs> in self-defense. I don't think this is actually fair to just unleash him onto people like, you know, good-natured, nice human beings like, like the, the folks of us here in the Murthy Mess. <laughs> He's so nice! How could you dance for all this? <laughs> well... You heard it here first. Bibiani has created the verb to Dan Merle something. <laughs> All right, we're going to the kid. Brendan, how are you feeling right now? You had an awesome, awesome match. Tell me, tell me how you're feeling. I mean, it's a whole 20 points more than the last time I played singles. So I feel, <laughs> I feel pretty good. You know what? I'm of two minds about it. I, I learned a very valuable lesson today. Uh, I had written Tina Fey on the cloudy with a chance of meatballs thing, and it's just the first thing that came into my head. And it, you know, it's funny because like I didn't. I, it's not like something I should have known, but I, I could have tried harder to picture that IMDb. So that's I gotta make sure I just a little harder on myself when I'm up here as far as thinking through things. Uh, if I have some doubt. That being said, uh, you know, my partner was good enough to challenge, and then I got a question that I already got and got wrong last time. So. Uh, so, 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 uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all a roller coaster. Uh, and um, so, but you know what, I'm very happy uh, to have put up that score. And uh, I, it was so fun to get to be a part of this match. And look, I, I think I actually have way more self-belief uh, than ever before. Uh, As you should. I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, you're... We're playing the best in the league now, and there's no guarantee that you'll ever be able to win these matches. You know what I mean? Because you're up against the very, very best. Um, but, man, I'm not, I'll be honest, part of me wasn't sure I'd ever score 26 points in the Schmodown. So knowing that there's a possibility for that. Uh, Jan January 25th, baby, you did it. You did it today. Coy, talk to me about what you feel like this means for the combination of these two this upcoming season. I mean, between them, this was this couldn't have been closer. Like, this was a beautiful thing separately. So th I've never been more confident of them together because if they can do this on their own, the way they work even separately as a team, like they were playing, like it was, it was like I mean, look at this. It was so What's, hard to confirm no, with to them go. separately, and I how had can you not them? Them? So I just I love how well they either win or learn. It's it's a win or learn game, and this was every example of that. And I was so impressed throughout, and I I got like three. So frankly, I was just like, I, I got was two. Just, These guys are incredible. Can I say one thing? I just want to say because <laughs> it helps me because otherwise I don't have it up here. Uh, I, I just want to say one thing because I've made a joke of it because it's fun too. But I, I do really want to thank Bibbs for making that challenge. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I that was a really great sign of sportsmanship, and uh, I, I'm really happy that you supported me in that way. And thank you very, very much. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Shazam and the Mouthy Marks. What a show! It really was. Thank it you really so was. much, guys. That's got to be the best triple threat we've ever seen. Well, it's the best triple threat. Speaks to Brendan. Are Boyd, you guys? But, you know, are you guys ready to get Dan Merled? <laughs> Here he is, your number one contender, Dan Merled! I'm about to get Dan Merled. Oh. <laughs> I've been Dan Merled, but I'm good. Don't worry. 
I survived the Dan Merle. Followed by some guy I don't know. Followed by some guy I don't know. All right, I've got something for you. Michael Jordan. Abraham Lincoln. Dan Merle. Dan, you have won the singles belt three times. You are heading to Atlanta on February 1st. 29th. To, to, 20, 20, yeah. February, Cu February couple yesterday. couple weeks off. <laughs> Sometime in February. Check the website. I didn't. <laughs> to, to compete against your faction, mate, how are you feeling for your fourth belt? How are you feeling? I mean, I love New York. What, what else can I say? <laughs> I love New York. Doesn't 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 come off the tongue as well. You, last year on this very stage defeated Ethan Irwin. What does it mean to you to come back to the stage and to Dan Merle somebody else? <laughs> uh, it it means it means so much. Um, God, good God, this uh, you guys are like these are like my two best favorite matches. This 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 room and this this crowd. There's something. I can't even put my finger on it, by the way. And also, probably, probably extra emotional when considering it was your lady Mara that was going to be competing here. Talk to me about what that's meant to step in uh, and take and have this match here uh, sort of in her place. I mean, uh, this is great, and I'm, and I'm excited to, to play this guy, but, you know, um, if I could if I could snap my fingers and have her here, um, I'd do it in a second. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, it was pointed out to me. It was pointed out to me by the amazing Frank that you just got 27 points, which ties William Bibiani's record. What do you have to say about that? He's gonna kill me. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna Dan Merle you. Mm. William, you heard it here first. William Bibiani is going to Dan Merle, Dan Merle. Uh, ben, that is your name, right, sir? <laughs> ben Bacon. Maybe. You're currently holds the belt. Going to be fighting in Atlanta. You're going to be you're going to be fighting in Atlanta against your faction mate. What are you feeling right now? Look, if you want to be the best of all time, you know exactly what you have to do. And this guy is the best of all time. So Atlanta is going to be a special day. And, uh, you know, obviously we, we found that we worked very well together. The preparation for this match was really exciting. But I know what I have to do. And I know how I want to end this season. So Atlanta's in my, it's in my sights. And uh, I have to say, knowing that he got Natalie Portman in the, in the wheel round, that was something that you guys had gone over. That's something that you had worked on him with. How did that feel for you to see, to see him dominate Natalie Portman? Well, okay, that came out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me try that. Botchamania. To do so well. You? To see him, Ben Natalie Portman. No, I'm just kidding. How did it feel for you to, have, so. to see him do so well in that Natalie Portman round? I think the best players all learn something from each other. I learned things from from John Roca. I've learned things from Oyama. I've learned things from Dan. I'm sorry, fourth round Roca? Yeah. <laughs> the second best of all time, John Roca. And. Uh, you know, Dan and I worked on this, and I had a theory, and uh, it just so happened that it played out in, in the favor of that theory. But that's what you do when you're when you're in the best faction of all time. You work together to get those wins, and I was proud to see him win. So, back to you, champ, number one contender. I'll tell you, everyone should be so lucky. You know, Bob, Bobby Gucci couldn't be here. This guy. We are so lucky, Bobby Gucci couldn't be here. <laughs> we are so lucky. We are so, so lucky. Thank you, guys. This guy was a kick-ass manager, and you know what? I got texts from my manager back in L.A., I, obviously with Ben. I got texts from Riley. I got texts from Roca. I got BC here. We got everyone that's new to this team and this faction. We got the Barbarian and Gray and Mike and everyone else, and I am so effing thrilled and excited to play this season. Yeah. Last question. Do you think the Finstock Exchange is going to Dan Merle the league? Hey, we're keeping the belt no matter what, so. 
Good answer. Survey says. Okay, when you're part of the stock exchange, you're wealthy. You can afford a challenge. So that's what the season is. Thank you. I wouldn't expect anything less, ladies and gentlemen. Your number one contender, Dan Moe. Thank you, Kate Mulligan, ladies and gentlemen. Kate Mulligan, give it up for Kate. So, so much there, Mark. So much that just happened. Not only, look, first of all, you got to give a big shout to what Shazam just pulled off because they pushed, I mean, Merle, again, he had to, last time when he beat Irwin, he had to score a perfect game. In order to beat Shazam, he had to tie William Bibiani's triple threat record. Uh, he had to, he gets pushed to the limit, and that's what he did because William Bibiani fought back in that Breaking news. He, he boop, boop, through, boop. See he's pretty good. Rounder, and where he just, maybe he, he doesn't know it, and he's like, I'm not sure, but he dug deep and <coughs> hit that five, and he made Brendan really work to knock him out of the of that particular round so and Meyer he came into this the super underdog and showed once again that's a future champion I challenge nothing of what you just said oh don't challenge we've me. had enough don't challenges challenge. and more so I feel like that is such a great initiation to the new era to this season to season seven because you saw a match like that that's what you're going to be getting all season long from all sorts of competitors this is just the start of it my friend it is, and I mean, that's the thing now, because you look at Atlanta, that was the thing. February 29th, we have our main event. We have the card. You have Emily Rose Jacobson in the, in, in the undercard going up against Alex Damon in the first inner geekdom match that he's ever played, and she is going to try, because this is a big match for Emily Rose Jacobson. If she can beat Alex Damon in his first one, that puts a lot of spotlight. She'll be 2-1. and one. That would be another big win for the Finstock Exchange, who picked her up in the draft. And But the main event. The main event now, Ben Bateman, who has said time and time again that he wants to be the best in the league. What a way to prove it, where you're going up against the three-time champion, but by the way, has never lost in a live event, has never lost when he was going for the title. So this is Ben Bateman's biggest challenge, bar none. And the fact that Dan Merle could walk out of Atlanta that soon and become a four-time Champion, it's it's insane. I we're booking that guy a lot of hotels and a lot of flights really this are, year. Yeah. I uh, suspect he is accommodated wonderfully. Ben Bateman, like Christian said, those tickets are on sale right now and on sale right now. The free for all in March in Los Angeles, Atlanta, LA. A lot of live excitement that we're going to be announcing soon, and then we have some matches to premiere upcoming in the next few weeks. So, uh, we're, we're going to be busy. It's we're going to be very busy, Not and you'll be able sleep. to find the schedule. A lot of people have been asking, like, where's the new schedule for the season? You, you go to the schmodownalive.com. The schedule will be out very, very soon of all the new matches. We have announced some matches that are coming up, some of those, like Jeff Snyder versus Ethan Irwin. That's right. John Roca versus Paul Oyama. Big match there, too. There's a lot of matches that are coming up. Corruption versus the family. There are a lot of big matches coming down the pike here. So make sure that you keep checking. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, for those people watching in the live stream, it's a very active community on the Facebook group. Go to Facebook group. Find the Schmodown group. Find us. If you're not a patron, if you want to become a patron, you should. There's going to be a lot of live streaming this season. We talked about at the beginning, the, the deal that we have now, the, the new partnership that we have with Skybound. You're going to see a lot more live streaming events this season. So check it out, ladies That's and gentlemen. That's good to hear. It's all thanks thank to these you. people. But it's I all thanks. I mean, I, I'm, am I great? Yes, of course. We all know that I'm special. A a am I great? No, not few really. few people on earth have ever been. Yes. But the most special reason, the only reason we're here, is because of these fine people that are in this room. It is. The community that's watching us across. They, oh. they, they helped build the Schmodown to what it's become. They're the only reason I've not yet deleted Facebook. <gasps> oh, no. It, it really is. Mark's not wrong. It's about community. We said it the other day on SCN Live, and we say it here again, too. This is the best community ever. It is so, it is so strong. It is so incredible, and because of it, we are we are able to build, and it's one of the reasons that we're able to build the way we are this season is because of you. So, and th before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our crew here today who really made this thing. Thank, thank you, thank crew. You, thank you, Noah. Thank you, all you guys. Really they bad. salute you, we and I do too. Whole crew, really, really a PC. Everyone, Megan, Megan, who's a, who's a saint. So many people. If I forgot you, I'll, I'll mention you again on SCN Live. I promise. <laughs> but thank you so much. Really pulled off the event. Thank you to the Roulette Theater, and thank you guys so what a way to start the season ladies and gentlemen yeah. movie trivia showdown season seven that's mark ellis i'm christian harloff we will see you this season
So there it was. That was the uh, JTH react to the uh, Season 7 movie trivia showdown premiere from the Roulette Auditorium, Brooklyn, New York. All in all, it was a uh, fantastic show, I felt. Um, Andrew Guy, Robert Meyer Burnett, much more high scoring than I think a lot of us uh, were anticipating. And Dan Merle was able to top Brendan the Kid Meyer and William Bibiani. I know a lot of people were talking on the uh, the Facebook page about some things that happened during the match, and I can understand some complaints about it, but I think all in all, the match, the the, the best player won, and I think when it comes to uh, Schmodown, that's the most important thing. If the best player wins, then I don't really think there's a whole lot to complain about. You can complain about things that happened during it, but saying that you know the wrong person won, I don't really agree with that. 99.99999% the best player wins the match, you know, for all intents and purposes. So that's my take on the uh, the uh, the season premiere. Um, unbelievable show. Really looking forward to everything that's going to come this year. A lot of great uh, players are coming in this year. Lots of rookies. We're going to have a billion zillion rookies competing for rookie of the year. So who knows? This will be the most wide open field of rookie of the year, player of the year, singles player of the year, team of the year, and all that good stuff. So can't wait to see what's going to happen this year. This is going to be a lot, a lot of fun. So as I said, that will do it for this edition of JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. If you like what you saw, feel free to always come back and watch uh, any of my other JTH Reacts. And you can leave a comment, subscribe, like, all that other good stuff that everybody else says that you'll probably never hear me say again because I, I would never remember it, to say any of it. So you can also follow me on Twitter at WWEJTH1. I will generally post my reactions to there. So if you're not following the page in general, if you follow the uh, my Twitter page, usually you will see when um, my reactions to these Schmodown matches will drop. And you can join the official Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. A lot of Schmodown competitors are on that page, so you can chat uh, with your, your your fellow uh, fans and Schmodown competitors in general. Um, a lot of them usually have a lot of good things to say, so be, be make sure you have those ears open or your, your eyes open. I guess you don't need your ears open to see Facebook posts. Stupid me. You'll get used to that as the season goes on. But uh, yeah, without further, I guess, not further ado... Stupid. I just said I'm stupid, and I just proved it right there. So thank you for watching this edition of JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Showdown. I'm JTH. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I bid you adieu-adieu.